Here in Nigeria, the Director General of Smeden, the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency for Nigeria, wants small businesses to be aware of the importance of enhancing the value of their enterprises. Uh, Diko Rada made the call during a world press conference ahead of the 2021 World Intellectual Property Day. He con he's concerned that most small and medium enterprises across the country do not market their products and services to attract the desired customers. April 26 each year, the World Intellectual Property Day is celebrated to shed light on the role that intellectual property plays in encouraging innovation and creativity in society. The theme for this year's World IP Day campaign is centered on IP and SMEs, taking your ideas to the market, and it offers an important opportunity to celebrate our SMEs. If you continue to talk intellectual, intellectual property to them, it's just like repeating a word that they don't understand. But I think there is need, whenever you are having this kind of panel discussions, you should expand it by in creating like a marketplace where you can engage the local people and then also engage local people who speak their local language. They explain every details of this kind of activity to them. All right, Ngozi Aderigwe, uh, partner ahead of intellectual property practice, Jackson Etienne, who joins me now to discuss this. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Um, I guess, you know, like we heard the director general there saying that uh, intellectual property, intellectual property, it's a word people, well, some people don't understand. Can you help us define it? Okay, so um, I'll break it down and make it very simple. Intellectual property would refer to products of the human creative um, abilities. So, for instance, um, we have, as humans, one of the unique things about us is that we can create things based on you know, the, the, the thinking that we put into activities and things like that. The product, it's intangible, but it's ha it has real value, and that we identify as intellectual property. So what are the uh, various kinds of intellectual property that can be protected? Okay, um, there are about four or five types, depending on how you look at it. The most apparent one is trademark, which everyone can, um, can, can relate to because that's what you see when you have a brand, the name of the brand, the logo and things like that. It is any mark that identifies it. And then you have patent, which protects inventions. So when you have um, innovative activities that result in inventions, you can protect that as patent. And then you have copyright. This is another very important um, type of um, intellectual property because copyright basically protects creativity in the, in the ways um, in which creatives usually give expression, whether it's literary or it's, um, um, or it's uh, musical works. You have um, things that have to do with the creative world, really, we protect it as copyright. And then you have designs. Industrial designs have to do with um, aesthetic outlook of products, so tangible products, the way they look, the way they are packaged, all that will be protected as industrial design. And then one big one that we often miss is trade secret. Now, this has to do with valuable information that any business would have, which gives it a competitive advantage in the market. So in a nutshell, those are the different forms of intellectual property. And what is what's important to highlight is that uh, whilst a lot of people generally might know about intellectual property in terms of how important it is for business, um, the classification that applies to the particular intellectual property that they create would be, um, usually you, would, you might need some guidance to determine how, um, which of the different forms would apply and how you want to protect them. So for instance, as a business, you would very likely have your brand, which needs to be protected as a trademark, and that you protect by registering it at the, register, at the trademarks registry. Um, you might also have innovation, right? And you might want to protect that innovation as a trade secret, in which case you're keeping it away from the public um, and in doing that, you create some, you create a legal framework of protection around it, which the law recognizes, or you could decide to, you know, file a patent. So those tricky conversations around which part of intellectual property or which form of intellectual property I should be protecting as a business are questions that an intellectual property expert is best positioned to help businesses with. Great stuff. Uh, it doesn't seem to have taken root in Nigeria, though. Why is that? Well, um, I, I wouldn't say it's peculiar to Nigeria. Um, the growth of intellectual property globally has been attached to the trend in economic development. So we are at a time where in our history, well, in our 
um, industrialization, where we, we, are, we have a, a knowledge-based economy, basically, that has meant that there's a lot more attention to intellectual, in intellectual property capital as a, a real, it's, a, it's a, a major part of any business growth, any business story, right? If you're going to make it as a business, you do have to have a lot of um, intellectual capital you know, invested in that business. That means for that you need to protect that as um, intellectual capital is intangible. The only way to protect it is really by way of intellectual property rights. So that trend is actually what is driving um, IP awareness. But I'd say, like I said earlier, IP awareness and IP education are not exactly the same thing, right? Because a lot of people understand the concepts Right, they understand that they need to be aware of it. They need to. Um, they, they understand that intellectual property plays an important role in their business. But what they fail to realize is, or to understand, is how that intellectual property right can be protected. When it comes down to it, how do you ensure that your business um, ideas and all the you know great things you're doing as a business is secured by way of intellectual property? And I would say it's not a just a Nigerian problem. This is something that is global. I was just reading a report the other day, um, it's a, a survey conducted in the US, and it showed that over 95% of businesses in the US were aware of intellectual property. But only about 20% understood how it impacts their business directly and are able to take steps to ensure that they protect their intellectual property. That is where the gap is, and that's you know, what World Intellectual Property Day hopes to close. That's the gap we hope to close. Great stuff. So that's the significance of the day. What is it, what elements of intellectual property should people be focused on or be aware of in order to ignite their interest? I think the first and most obvious, like I said, is trademarks, right? Any business would start off with a name. Any business would start off with a, a, a brand name and a logo and a slogan. You need to have that protected, first of all. The risk of not doing that is that you would have another business, a competitor, who can take advantage of your goodwill and use a similar trademark or even an identical trademark. Now, this is one of the reasons why counterfeiting is on the rise in, in, in Nigeria, because a lot of businesses haven't done the first, this first um, thing, which is registering your trademark. And then you look at businesses that thrive on account of the innovative you know, products and activities they come up with. How do you ensure that your competitor cannot take that and run uh, with it? The way to do it is to you know, um, either protect it as trade secret or patent. If you understand the correlation between your business success and intellectual property, the conversation is easy. So for us at this time, our focus is on helping SMEs, because this year the focus is on SMEs, helping them make that connection between the value of their business and the intellectual capital that has gone into the creation of that value and ensuring that they take steps to protect that um, capital. Would that help to um, solve the issue of capitalization for a lot of SMEs? How, how would understanding of IP and you know, fleshing out that understanding help businesses with capitalization, which is a yeah, big issue? Exactly, and, and that's a very good question. Okay, so um, intellectual property creates value for the business. It captures value, actually, right? So you create, you do what you do as a business, right? Create your unique flavors, and you capture it by way of intellectual property protection. It becomes that legal right that enables you, um, the, you have access to investors' funds, enables you, because, of course, your business is a, the value of your business is, um, you, you det determine that value by recognizing the intellectual property rights that are locked into that business. And so to, in today's world, if you do want to have access to funds, you do have to have a very good sense of what your intellectual property um, assets are as a business. And that becomes part of the conversation where you're looking at your value as a business and what the potential yields might be for any investor who is interested in putting money in your business. Great stuff. We have to have you back for further conversation. Oh, Ngozi sure. Adewigwe, partner, head of IP uh, practice at Jackson Itsu and I do thank you so much for taking us. Thank story. you for having me.